The squad ahead of the new season. The club has announced that the signing of three new players, headlined by Zimbabwe and midfielder Kama Biliat. He joins from Mamelodi Sundowns. Despite initial rumors linking him to well a move overseas, it's believed that a three-year deal he was offered by Chiefs was too good to turn down. We am switch to FC's Lechonolo Mirwa, as well as it's going to be a tough one, but our commentators are going to have to learn it. Adria Mirado, Adrianara Manana who played for Fossa Juniors FC in Madagascar, have also penned deals with the Soweto Giants. It's going to be a hectic one. Tell you what, another man is going to have to learn that name soon. <laughs> Valen Bulli, SABC's News and, well, SABC Sports senior reporter, joins us now in the studio. A couple of days ago, he was eating rations, and he promised me that he was not coming back with listeriosis. Valen, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. You've just returned from Russia. Let's start there, though, with that story for Kaiser Chiefs. We had a chat this morning about the signings. It's not done and dusted, but bugs me, though. Chiefs have just made a signing, three new players. But who's making those signings when they don't have a coach? That name, Andrea Rimanana. Yeah, oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, man. So you've been practicing. Andrea Rimanana. <laughs> I, I covered uh, the Kosafa Cup, yeah. so that's where they saw him. Okay. was the player of the tournament there. Um, very good on the edge of the box, playing as a number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, Kaiser Chiefs doesn't really have anyone there currently in that position. So, but look, the Kosafa Cup and football, in the PSL are two different things. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting how he blends mm -hmm. uh, and also how he adapts because also as a foreign player coming to a foreign league uh, anywhere in the world, it's all about adaptation, um, especially in your first season. Yeah. Uh, so I, f I feel that for Ducks, just keep it safe there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get used to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get used so to it. So yeah. I think for him, it's, it's just about that. But yeah. For the team, for Kaiser Chiefs, they're making these signings. The big question, though, a lot of fans have been asking, we've been asking ourselves, the season kicks off in earnest. Immediately after the World Cup, you're going to have the pre season tournaments, and then it's down to business. Teams like Bloom Celtic unveiled uh, their new coaches. Some of the teams are settled. Roger DeSars moved his club down to Cape Town. Kaiser Chiefs is scratching our heads. They're making signings. Who's signing them if there's no coach? You know, it's a very interesting uh, take that people have around who has to make the signings, you know? Um, because for me, I believe that the players don't belong to a coach. They belong to a club. Mm. And let's say Kaiser Chiefs only confirms their coach two weeks from now. Yeah. By that time, already we are in July. And remember what happens in July. Yeah. Oh, most of the contracts have elapsed. The players uh, have moved to different clubs. There's no one to sign. Are you going to wait for that? You know. Mm -hmm. And what if you are signing? What, what if you are signing a, a coach who is new in the country, who is new to African football? Yeah. At all. So he's not really well versed on local talent. Uh, you have to show him to say, oh, this one is this one. And in any case, yeah. in any case, when you are signing a player of the tournament. Uh, and when you are signing somebody who's been the Absa Premiership mm. uh, football of the season, yeah. somebody uh, who's been number two in Africa for the lo uh, local CAF uh, award, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, come up, Billiard. You don't, yeah. you, you don't need any pre-approval yeah. from, from, from any coach. Let's, let's, let's go here then. You mentioned something interesting, what you just said now. Getting an overseas coach is going to be tough trying to bleed him into the local system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rumor has it, and you'll check me if I'm wrong, rumor has it, it could be one Mr. Stuart Baxter who's at Bafana. Bafana currently, he could be making his way back to Naturena, and one of the names has come back once again to the circles of the Bafana job, and that of, of Carlos Kiros, and fair enough, it is speculation right now, but it is rife that Stuart Baxter is going back, or should be going back to Naturena. I think this Stuart Baxter thing, thing comes at a, at a critical time. But uh, there's another name that people have not heard about. Mm. And I'm going to say it here for the first time. Um, he was coaching at Al Ali. Uh, he's the one who signed uh, Pagamani Mashambi at Al Ali. Yes, yes, yes. Um, his name is Hossam Baldri. Uh, Hossam Baldri. Yeah, Hossam Baldri. Um, he's, he's been coaching Al Ali, but he was on his way to Etoli to Sahel. But I understand that uh, he came to the country last week. Um, with Kaiser Chiefs. I'm not sure if he's still in the picture though, mm -hmm. um, because this was before I also left for, for Russia yeah. um, when, when I heard about him. But 
Now, Stuart Baxter's link is very strong. Strong to an extent that Safa is not really bothered. Because I gather that they are not really keen to keep him. Yeah. Either. So, any chance that uh, Baxter could leave uh, Bafana Bafana, to them is welcome. But the challenge is now that Baxter is reportedly on 1.2 million rands a month. And not too bad. I mean, hey, one <laughs> point, I mean. <laughs> hey, as now you're telling me, go over that. You're bad. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. So now, is he keen to leave? It looks like he's keen to leave because mm -hmm. also he's not happy with the setup there uh, at Safa either. And also, after failing to qualify for the World Cup, mm -hmm. uh, the this, this, this situation is not nice for him there. But now, how is he going to leave? Yeah. I also gather that Safa is keen to let him go if he is not going to demand yeah. anything from... Remember, he's got a five-year contract. I was just about to say, unless an yes. agreement of sorts is reached with Kaiser Chiefs, but surely Stewart will probably want some you know, halfway compensation as far as... He's the, the one who's resigning. Yeah. Safa is not chasing him out. Yeah. So, so, so Chiefs must be offering him something good, though, if that's where he's going. Uh, look, there's been contact yeah. between the parties. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's puzzling because he didn't live really on a, in a good way when he left Kaiser Chiefs. Mm -hmm. He had just won a league title and, 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 it, and was, it was more like, no, I'm leaving. And, that, and that's why I think maybe this question is so pertinent. Well, so, you know, I, 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 mm. I, a bit of, you know, uh, eyebrow raising because then there's rumor that Dr. Kumalo is making his way back to Natural Land as well to be his assistant coach. It is the most puzzling thing ever. But quick comment on that because I want us to move on to, to, to Russia and tell us about those, uh, those Russians that... I didn't understand when I got this information about Dr. Kumalo, but I got it from three different people. Then I started to understand it. More so because I had also heard previously that it was Baxter when he was working at Chiefs, even though they won two league titles mm -hmm. and they played well uh, with Dr. As assistant, he was the one who wanted a different assistant other than Doctor. So now when... The two are linked again. Yeah, they're two linked again. Yeah. But I can, I can confirm to you that he is the number one target. But as to whether the negotiations between uh, Dr. Chenu Dan and uh, Mr. Kizam Daung will go well yeah. regarding this, let's wait and see. Well, we're going to have to wait and see indeed. I know that we run out of time, but I'm going to ask my director, beg him for an extra minute, two minutes or so, because we want to continue this. Uh, gives us one and a half minutes. Quick one. Mm -hmm. Russia in full swing. You were there for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. The Russians on the field and off the field, have they impressed? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I got there uh, uh, on a Wednesday, and the tournament was starting on, on a Thursday. And um, the Russians were not really optimistic about their team uh, prior to the tournament because it's the lowest ranked team. And, and also, they've not been performing well. They had not won in seven matches before the tournament, mm -hmm. but they won 5-0, the, the, the opening, the opening game. game. Still, yeah. the optimism was not entirely there yeah. because they were looking at their next two matches. But after, the after they victory. won against uh, Egypt, ah, there's a place there called uh, Red Square. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. They didn't. The vodka was flowing. <laughs> yeah, it was flowing. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, my director is telling me we run out of time. And he seriously wants me to go. We're hopefully going to have this conversation again, continue, especially moving on to the end of the World Cup, because we'd like to have your insights in particular with that. Thank you very much there. Velim Bully, SABC Sports Scene Reporter and SABC News, well, in-house analyst on all things sports, joining us there, conversating about some football news and, of course, the World Cup. We stay with, well, back home rather, not football, but something similar to the Nedbank Cup. It's Nedbank Golf this time round in a coup for South Africa. Four-time major winner Rory McElroy will return to South Africa to tee it up. This is in the Nedbank Golf Challenge at Sun City this November. He played his first and only tournament at the Gary Play.